So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, so glad that you were able to join us for today's webinar, which is titled, How to Accelerate the Delivery of Scalable HR Integrations and Automation. Uh, this webinar is co-presented by Harbinger Group and Workato, and I am Janavi, Vice President of Strategy and Business Development here at Harbinger Group, and it's a pleasure and privilege to be your host today. Uh, I'm especially excited about the topic of our session today because, you know, uh, we will be focusing on the delivery aspects of HR integrations, uh, unlike some of the earlier sessions we've done that focused on more of the business needs and the business drivers for implementing automation and integrations. So today, starting with challenges and trends to practical tips and best practices, we'll talk about what organizations can do to achieve, um, you know, sort of a faster time to value through HR integrations and automation. And of course, uh, now, you know, the, uh, the value that Workato platform offers in that context. So as you can see, there's a lot of ground to cover in a short time. So without much ado, perhaps we can get started. And again, a warm welcome to all of you who, who have joined and are joining. So let's move on. Uh, just so before we get, uh, you know, real quick, some quick housekeeping notes here. This webinar is being recorded, as you can see, and we will be sharing this recording with all of you as well as all the registered guests as well. Um, and of course, last but not least, we would love to hear from you throughout this webinar, uh, be it questions or your own experiences with integrations. So please make use of the Q&A box or, or, to chat, or the chat box to interact with us. And uh, we'll do our best to address all of the questions and comments at the end of this session. And if for some reason we're unable to um, uh, take any of the questions, we'll be sure to follow up in our email along with the recording. So. With that, um, let's jump right into our session. I am super excited uh, to introduce you to our two speakers today. Uh, we have here, here with us uh, Vasan Chakravarti. He is a senior solution architect at Workato, and Rashmi Kulkarni, she is a technical architect and a delivery expert at Harbinger Group. Together, they both bring to the table a wealth of experience in architecture and delivery of large-scale integrations. So welcome, Rashmi, and welcome, uh, Vasa. Uh, perhaps uh, I'd like, you know, I'll have them introduce uh, themselves uh, here. So maybe we can start with Vasant and then move over to Rashmi. Sure. Vasant, Thanks, Janavi. Thanks, Janavi. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, as introduced, my name is Vasant uh, Chakravarti. I'm, the, I'm from the pre-sales team from Mokado. Uh, close to two and a half years been working with Vocado. Overall, around uh, close to 13 years of experience uh, with a combination of pre-sales, implementation, delivery, and support. Um, in today's webinar, uh, I, along with Rashmi, will be talking about how, from a delivery perspective, Vocado can help scale uh, HR-specific integrations, uh, discuss some of the integrities of it, and over the end of the call, you'll be able to take away some uh, some value add in terms of how you can improve your improve and scale your uh, automations. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Vasant. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, a warm welcome to all the participants. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, I'm Rashmi Kulkarni, and I, I work here as a technical architect at uh, Arbinger Group. Uh, I have around uh, 12 plus years of experience uh, in IT space, uh, been into software development and uh, designing the technical solutions uh, across various projects and uh, various domains, uh, including uh, e-learning, uh, HR tech, and health tech. Uh, I have uh, worked on multiple uh, integration projects, and I'm quite excited uh, to share those experiences uh, with you in, in the course of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. Uh, thanks again, Vasant. Uh, welcome, warm welcome to both of you. So let's move on and look at uh, take a quick look at, at our agenda today, what we'll be covering. We'll start by examining sort of the challenges in HR integrations and some of the key automation trends in HR, uh, followed by a quick overview of the Harbinger and Workato partnership, uh, after which we'll dive right into the various aspects of delivery um, you know, things like comparing custom versus Workato-based integrations, tips and tricks, uh, practical sort of uh, um, practical and actionable best practices, 
And of course, a delivery uh, integrations delivery discussion would be incomplete without a mention of Mercato's GEARS framework, a model for um, enterprise automation uh, management as well as governance. So we'll talk about that. And then finally, Rashmi and Vasant will share some uh, customer success stories. So with that, uh, let me invite Rashmi to lead us into today's session. Over to you, Rashmi. Thanks, thanks, Janvi. So uh, let's take a look at what are the uh, you know, challenges with HR integration? What's the need? What are the pain points uh, driving HR integrations? So in any uh, business universe, like there are typically multiple HR platforms serving different needs, like uh, performance management or uh, enrollment system, time and tracking. So these these are these have this catered to uh, respective uh, you know uh, specific areas. So it becomes inevitable to make the system talk to each other for for a seamless and integrated view. Interoperability uh, can help in breaking the information silos, but there is lack of uh, common standard for it. So that, that brings in the need for integrations. With multiple uh, systems involved, data uniformity is, is often needed uh, for uh, you know, an integrated view to look at the data. For HR workflows, like there are uh, many possibilities which can, um, you know, introduce we can, where we can introduce automation and uh, improve the efficiency. So one such example is uh, let's say onboarding automation. So if an ATS is uh, integrated with the HRIS and payroll, it can greatly improve overall candidate experience and speed up the process overall. How to uncover uh, the business insights or uh, reporting across various connected systems is an, is an interesting uh, challenge that, that can uh, be solved with uh, HR integrations. So with these pain points, let's say when decides to build integrations, now, now let's see uh, what are the challenges in implementing the integrations. So integration enables system to work uh, together efficiently, but building an efficient and effective integration may have its own challenges. The involved systems may have their own technology stack. For example, one system could be built using a uh, Rust API layer, or other could be using SOAP, or SOAP as an API layer. One could have a uh, you know, like different set of authentication mechanism. Other could be uh, using altogether different uh, authentication strategy, authorization, additional authorization strategies. So each of these like systems, connected systems, could have their own ways of uh, managing connections. So overall, there is uh, you know the variety of uh, technology stack involved in each of these systems. So even for building the integrations, we need to uh, account for the specific skill sets. So while a building integration, like, like a, any uh, regular development project, like it, it needs to be like built from scratch, design everything from end to end, like uh, uh, you know, evaluate the tech stack, uh, design and architecture, the components, uh, have the entire development end to end process, uh, even uh, procure for uh, hardware, manage the uh, infrastructure deployment, maintenance has its own uh, share, uh, effort share. And along with the uh, functional requirements, like this non-functional requirements, NFRs are uh, very critical when it comes to post-deployment. So security is very important aspect uh, once the, uh, you know, like post-deployment, uh, what, what would be the, uh, you know, like designated access for the deployed environment or even for the system that's being integrated, like how would uh, the authentication authorization would be managed uh, securely. Like those aspects need to be uh, considered while building integrations. Or how would the system perform for a varying uh, load? Like if the uh, data load increases, uh, will there be system backgrounds? Like we need to consider all these uh, factors uh, while uh, designing the integrations. So with all these challenges, how, how would Swill still fast track the delivery of uh, integrations? Because these are like many many things to cover, so how 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 we, how we can still kind of uh, you know fast track that entire uh, process, and here IPaaS becomes a powerful solution. 
Uh, with that, let me hand it over to uh, Vasant for covering us uh, automation trends and integration. Great. Thank, thank you, Rashmi. Uh, so teeing it off from the HR challenges that Rashmi discussed, right? So let's also focus on some of the automation trends and insights we are currently seeing, right? So end of last year, Vocaro released a, a report called the Vocaro Automation Ethics. And if you look closely, see the trends where, you know, where automations were erupted, you will find that the HR-based automations and integrations were <clears throat> among the top four growing domain. In fact, the growth itself was outpacing other departments like the finance or the DevOps, which will probably be the most common, right? And if you move on, and if you specifically break it down in terms of the <clears throat> HR side of automations, you'll see employee onboarding makes up almost 20% of the uh, HR use cases, uh, growing at about more than 250% year on year, while talent and employee experience are right now uh, all, all, always been at the center of the automation trend and framework. At the same time, we're also seeing trend uh, attraction of, uh, you know, rest of the HR processes garnering a lot of requirement. But in short, you can see that along with the challenges, we're also seeing a good amount of trends around the HR, uh, HR, tech, uh, HR tech space as well. So that said, I also take this opportunity to quickly uh, give a, you know, a high level view on what Bocaro does and what we are as a platform and how we cater to these growing trends. Uh, so Vocaro is a next-gen iPaaS platform that, that, that does data integration and uh, process automation, right? Uh, so to a low-code, no-code uh, automation builder, we have uh, democratized integrations where a person with any skill set or uh, role would be able to build integrations or uh, recipes that we call in our world. Uh, the Vocaro's integration and the automation logic uh, comes to life uh, in the tool, as you can see, the recipe builder, where you can build any workflow, right, from a simple to an advanced level of complexity uh, to an intuitive, uh, yet uh, extremely powerful interface. Uh, you can call it like an English or a business-friendly language. Uh, and recipes, like I said, the workflows that we, uh, we call it in our world are trigger-based workflows with the ability to connect with uh, uh, thousands of applications, whether they're cloud-based or on-prem. So together with these, Vokara can be used to design multiple use cases around any domain. Moving on, uh, earlier this year, you know, Gartner released its uh, latest uh, magic quadrant. We call it MQ for iPass. And you know what? Uh, we did extremely well. So Vokara has been a leader since we first participated back in uh, 2018. Uh, since then, there have been some changes. But this one has been bigger where uh, what will happen this year. Because in the 2023 iPass MQ quadrant, uh, the original founding vision of Vocado uh, in terms of how it's been aligned to the present and future of IPAS was actually reiterated. And how was it reiterated? Where there was a specific comment on the convergence of integration and automation. So from a use case and a platform perspective, automation played a, big, a larger role in this year's MQ criteria compared to the years prior. And Vocado was acknowledged as one of those vendors uh, to meet this growing demand out there. But this kind of goes to a testimony in terms of what we've always been, uh, you know, calling ourselves in terms of the next generation of integration, where there's always going to be a convergence of uh, automation and uh, in integration there. In fact, this, this is a trend that's actually driving the increasing demand for iPasses. And then, of course, one more last point that was highlighted also was the democratization of uh, to support different users and buyers. Integration is no more uh, IT or a technical domain. Platforms must support a range of users from uh, business technologists, uh, experts, uh, uh, product leaders, or to an integration specialist or engineers. That said, uh, again, to just talk about, you know, from an offering perspective, so Vocaro, we have, um, Vocaro has got two lines of businesses, right? One is the Vocaro Direct, which is basically for customers to use it internally as an operating system for integrations and automation across every department of business. Uh, an example uh, would be here an enterprise who's going to use Vocado for uh, some of the internal automations like uh, order to cash, uh, procure to pay, hire to retire, or any other department specific processes. Vocado embedded, which is actually I come primarily come from, is a fully managed integration layer between, say, your product, a customer product system, and, and their customer system. A good example here would be, let's say, let's take a SaaS product company, for example, who specializes in a specific area, say like recruiting or ATS or scheduling, would definitely have a requirement from the customer to offer a bundled integrated component with some of the existing HRI systems like success factors, workday, et cetera. So this is where Workout's embed platform can come in and solve that particular pain. What do I said, end of the day? It's the same product, the same code base, which powers integration inside and outside the organization. 
Next, this is just a sample list of HR-based customers and partners we have. Uh, this has a, a, a combination of both direct and embedded, not exhaustive though, but this gives, gives to, goes to show you the, the strength that we have in terms of the HR tech base, whether it's on the internal side of automation or whether it's on the external side of it. Uh, now I hand it over to Jana Vita Thanks. Thanks, Vasant. Uh, thank you, Vasant. And so let's look at how all of all this comes together, right? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Workardo and Harbinger partnership and how we are helping customers with their integration and automation. But uh, before we do that, just a quick overview about Harbinger, just to sort of give context uh, about who we are and what we do. So Harbinger Group is a software services company, a software development services company. Uh, we are, uh, our, our services are geared towards helping other customers build products and technology solutions that essentially transform the way people work and learn. Uh, the Harbinger Group has been around for over 30 plus years uh, with 850 plus employees and growing. And we have served over 400 customers over the years and built over 500 different uh, technology products, uh, and not to mention other projects that we have done along the way. And uh, very proud to also talk about our diversity uh, with the women in workforce, accounting for over 40% of the company. Um, so we are a tech company at heart. Our core DNA, if I can say that, is product development and technology solution development. Uh, integrations and automations is kind of one of the practices within the big umbrella of Harbinger Group services and offerings. Um, who we serve? So we, over the three plus decades we've been around, we've worked with customers of all sizes and across various different domains. But where we focus our energies, where we have expertise and focus is in the areas of HR and HR tech. We are a, you know, a, a go-to partner for HR tech development, uh, as well as e-learning and learning education sector, Digital, digital publishing, and uh, last but not least, high tech and enterprises. Um, so being, you know, I guess how, so our integration sort of journey, if I were to call it that, started over a decade ago because partly a lot of it uh, due to us being in the areas of HR, playing in the areas of HR tech and HR, and even learning for that matter, where as that space was evolving, we started getting requests to help our customers with their integration needs, you know, one-off integrations it started out with. And, you know, slowly as that HR tech uh, sort of domain evolved or HR domain evolved, um, in parallel, the IPAS was also, IPAS space was also evolving. And over time, those one-off integrations, one or two integrations started becoming requests for multiple integrations. So how do we scale? Uh, and you know, what's the win-win strategy? That's where we decided to strategically partner when we're with one of the market leading uh, platforms, iPaaS platforms and Workato was our go-to choice uh, for partnerships. So moving on, just talk a little bit, we'll move on uh, to the next slide. Um, so just that's, that's where about three years ago, we partnered with Workato to deliver for our customers more of a win-win strategy for everyone. Uh, you know, uh, Rashmi talked about all the challenges that come into play when we uh, when doing integrations, custom integrations, right? All the things you have to take into account, the maintenance, scalability, even after those integrations are developed. Um, Vasan talked about some of the, the, the value that Workato brings as an IPaaS platform to, our, to the customers in helping not only develop, but also maintain these integrations uh, at scale. So that this is where the partnership was sort of, uh, born about three years ago. And since then we've worked with many customers to help them with their uh, integration and automation journey. Harbinger Group is a preferred implementation partner of Workato, uh, both on the embedded as well as uh, the direct side. And um, Vasan talked about that earlier. Uh, we have teams that are certified in Workato, so architects, developers, what have you, um, who really understand the best practices of Workato, be it recipe ops and lifecycle management, PLS framework, just everything to ensure, um, you know, not just timely, but uh, a sound delivery of Workato integrations and uh, automations. Of, and given our background as a tech company and having been in the space of HR and HR tech for such a long time, over two decades now, we really have extensive experience 
we're working with HR integrations. So, um, so we have been working in the last three years. It seems like a short time, but work with several customers, helping them with their, this is just a list of our HR integrations that we've helped our customers with and list, uh, and, it, and it's not even a comprehensive list. Uh, obviously the approaches, you know, depending on the customer needs, the use cases, uh, just simple HTTP connectors or using um, the custom connectors that Workato allows you to build for uh, any uh, proprietary systems or any systems that they don't already have a connectors for. So we've built custom connectors and of course, written a many, many custom mm -hmm. recipes and actions along the way. So really have a good hold on both the HR integration space, as well as the Workato sort of uh, best practices and uh, we can marry them together and help uh, customers implement their work out of practice. So moving on, um, I just want to take a brief second to take a step back and talk about Harbinger's integration experience as a whole. Uh, so work out, of course, we've been doing that over the last uh, few years, helping customers when they want to do not just the one off one or two integrations, but integrations at scale, automation at scale. Uh, but prior to that, like I said, we have experience of, of over 10 plus years and built uh, over a hundred different unique connectors across various systems, HRIS, CRMs, ATS, uh, payroll, collaboration platforms like Teams, Slack, uh, as well as other IT and uh, productivity platforms like Azure, AD, and Office 365, what have you. So a really, really uh, vast experience when it comes to integrations uh, over this past decade and done different types. So uh, not just, obviously, Workato is, uh, we've worked with Workato and continue to work uh, with, uh, with our customers on that. But prior to that, built a lot of custom integrations, point-to-point -point integrations based, uh, uh, you know, based on APIs and file-based integrations, as well as standard-based integrations like HRXML or WSO2. So again, the point being, our, ex our experience with integration and automation goes back uh, a long time and really have a stronghold in this space. And uh, Rashmi has been involved in many of these integrations, both custom as well as Workato. So uh, with that, I will hand over mm -hmm. to uh, Rashmi to talk a little bit more and dive right in, into some of those uh, technical, not technical, but delivery aspects of integrations. Over to you, Rashmi. Okay, thank you, thank you, Janvi. Okay, so as a Chandi covered, like we at Harbinger have been providing integration solutions now uh, over the years. So, you know, like we have seen both the worlds, custom built integrations as well as uh, work out of power integrations. And from that experience, I would like to share uh, the differences that we have observed when it comes to both the uh, approaches. So uh, with, with custom built integrations, uh, the development process is uh, uh, more complex because we need to consider it like a, um, you know, like regular development project where uh, we need to uh, like tackle all the aspects of development right from, you know, designing the architecture and uh, handling NFRs, uh, design the uh, code components, managing connections with those systems. So everything is, is from scratch. So overall, uh, you know, the development effort as well as the design effort is uh, high and uh, it involves uh, complexity needs skill resources it needs infrastructure planning and all that uh, adds to uh, you know more time while uh, building the in integration that it also adds to cost uh, but with workato uh, you know like we have uh, experienced that uh, it, it eliminates all all that hard work of uh, uh, you know like developing those technical aspects for creating and managing uh, integrations. So with its uh, low code, no code uh, behavior, like uh, developers can right, you know, jump into the core integration uh, development with, with really uh, easy to use steps, uh, you know, like readily use readily available built-in connections for uh, library of uh, thousand plus connectors there. There are uh, numerous recipe templates available, which can serve as a, you know, ready starting point uh, to fasten the overall development process. Uh, Vocato inherently is uh, very flexible in nature. It, it offers uh, scalability. So extending existing integration to add, uh, you know, more business logic to it, more processing to it, or 
uh, be it adding a new system altogether uh, to the integration, existing integration, it, it becomes really easy. So let's take an example. Let's say we want to uh, introduce email notification uh, in, in, um, in the integration process. Then with custom built integration, it would be something like, like first evaluate like which email uh, service provider we want to use and then you know maybe design some of the email templates and then uh, integrate it into the um, into the code or language that we have uh, um, you know for the custom built integration but with workato it's like a, a you know few minutes thing where we can use the readily uh, available um, email connector there and easily introduce um, uh, extend the features further so that that makes it uh, you know integration process overall very agile and uh, flexible with for this uh, NFRs like non-functional requirements like uh, you know scalability of the application like whenever there is uh, let's say increasing uh, load um, we need to handle or or there are monitoring aspects like uh, having ability to uh, debug uh, uh, some of the uh, you know post deployment issues or have audit log of uh, what what happened during the um, you know like data transfers or synchronization of data across systems. So having that auditability or uh, security aspects, so all all these uh, aspects needs to be built in custom integrations, which involves investing a considerable effort. But with Workato, uh, these are all available out of the box. Uh, so you know, like we can uh, directly start focusing on uh, on the really core area of what what needs to be integrated. Like what what exactly is the core. Uh, part that we need to consider. All, all these aspects are taken care. So, uh, Vocato offers uh, uh, you know easy monitoring for uh, jobs that's run uh, whenever uh, integration recipe runs, or we can easily add further logs for auditability or any uh, you know troubleshooting uh, post deployment. The platform is very uh, like scalable. It can um, cater to varying load. Uh, for security, like uh, Vakato has very comprehensive approach. Uh, so the platform uh, is audited for uh, SOC 2 type 2. It is uh, tested against OAP still vulnerabilities. Then the penetration testing and load testing is uh, frequently carried out in the platform. So we don't need to worry about, uh, you know, like those uh, crucial areas that that's all uh, taken care of uh, by Vakato platform itself. It is available over HTTPS, so data, uh, be it in transit or at rest, is uh, encrypted. So overall, uh, you know, it, it gives us uh, like our energy can really be directed into uh, you know the the core area of what what needs, what systems are to be integrated for. So that that gives us great flexibility um, for developing integrations. Uh, having said that, like custom built integrations could still be uh, useful for, you know, like one or two odd integration use cases. But when it comes to uh, scalability or uh, having feature proof integration process, Workato would definitely be a wiser choice. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we have already seen how Workato helps in the uh, integration process. Now let's see why why choose Workato platform. So it's an uh, enterprise grade uh, IPaaS platform. It is uh, uh, fully supported by uh, cloud native architecture. It is hosted in uh, AWS um, infrastructure, which which enables to leverage uh, you know all the benefits of uh, inherent with uh, cloud services. It is powered with uh, Kubernetes and Kubernetes containerization for achieving scale and speed. It, it's a low-code, no-code environment. So, um, you know, we can use built-in uh, app connectors. There are 1,000 plus uh, uh, app connectors readily available uh, for which, like, we can just start, like, put in the credentials and uh, start talking to the system uh, right away without uh, worrying about, um, you know, aspects to ma manage the connections or... Uh, you know any any other uh, aspects uh, for building it. it it's readily available the runtime environment itself is uh, provided in the platform so we don't need to worry about uh, any infrastructure provisioning or hardware cost or devops cost it, it's all uh, available there overall which uh, makes the integration process uh, uh, fast enough 
it eliminates uh, the need for traditional code development for uh, custom built integration so it, it reduces costs greatly it it improves the time to market we can deliver faster integrations and uh, with with our experience you know like uh, the integration speed delivery of integration increases multifold with with workato with its uh, powerful features uh, Vakato offers uh, embedded solution as as Vasan covered in his earlier slide. So it, it can serve as an uh, you know, embedded integration layer right into the uh, existing product. Uh, once integrated, like it can uh, one can actually start building integration right right in the existing product. So it, it gives uh, you know seamless experience for uh, building integrations. Uh, let's move. Yeah. So now uh, let's wear uh, developer hat and uh, let, let, let's take a deep dive into uh, a, few, a few key features of Workato, which have proven really helpful in uh, building powerful integrations. So API platform feature is, is uh, it kind of turns our API recipe, like uh, Workato recipe into uh, a REST uh, API endpoint. We can think of it as almost, uh, uh, you know, API engine, REST API engine, where we can start exposing APIs in a matter of minutes with its uh, powerful features. It also offers a uh, custom domain. So it, like behind the scenes, it would, uh, uh, you know, like handle all, all those aspects of uh, uh, infrastructure provisioning or exposing the APIs. It, it will just make it very easy to uh, expose a Workato recipe as an endpoint where then external systems can uh, easily invoke uh, Workato based integrations. One example could be let's say uh, in an external system, um, a department is created and there is, uh, let's assume, a cascading effect that needs to be handled in the integration process. Then uh, the external system can invoke this uh, Workato recipe. Uh, it, it can handle the, um, you know, like uh, cascading further tasks that needs to be done as part of, as effect of uh, department creation, and it can synchronously um, return um, the results back to the uh, external system. Uh, another example could be, uh, let's say a user, uh, in an external system, a user requests for uh, certain business insights from, uh, you know, like another external system, let's say payroll or, or some other system, then uh, whenever user requests for that report, like uh, that could be called to Vakato recipe using this API platform. It can, the Vakato recipe can build a report and send it back uh, the results to a user. Lookup table is uh, uh, important feature uh, in Workato. It, it provides us with a persistent data store uh, in the structure of rows and columns. So it is it is particularly um, you know helpful for uh, storing the uh, master data. Like in, in integrations, while building integrations, we we need um, you know at times re references to those uh, enum values like uh, let's say marital status or Employment status, like we need, uh, we need to store those uh, as you know persistent data as a reference entity, and lookup table can uh, help here. Another use case for lookup table uh, we have seen is uh, storing the configuration parameters. So, so let's say uh, you know like some configuration parameters differ from for client to client, then uh, we can easily store those in uh, lookup table. And uh, uh, Vakato recipe can then um, handle the values based on handle the scenarios, uh, different parameterization for based on the lookup table values. Next one is uh, collections. It is it is a powerful feature for uh, data manipulation and uh, data extraction. So it, it can turn our input CSV or or a list into a queryable um, tables. So where we can use, um, uh, you know, like where clause, order clause, or all, all the SQL features basically uh, to manipulate the data or uh, extract it for further processing. It is uh, particularly uh, helpful in use cases where related data is to be synchronized uh, across systems, or or if there is any need of, uh, you know, bulk data transfers across systems, then it, it helps in, um, Parallel job processing and uh, you know like uh, to handle those uh, with optimal speed. 
recipe functions is uh, another nice feature. Uh, you can think of it as like a modular function in traditional development. It, it serves as a, a reusable component in the, uh, in the, in, in the integration workflow. Uh, examples for it could be, uh, let's say we want to uh, have certain data filtering or data validations. Those are you know, common across uh, uh, integrations. Then we can uh, create uh, reusable set of steps as recipe functions. And uh, this, this can then make uh, uh, reuse those steps across uh, integrations. We can split uh, long recipes into recipe functions to make it readable. So overall, it helps in uh, improving uh, reusability of uh, steps as well as uh, improve the readability. Recipe ops, uh, as the name suggests, it, it helps in uh, managing and monitoring uh, active recipes. So one can uh, start or stop recipes based on uh, you know, the uh, requirement in the integration uh, workflow. A good use case for using recipe ops could be uh, monitor task usage uh, in the uh, integration uh, while the recipes are running. And once the threshold is reached, uh, notify designated uh, members, uh, notify about the limits are crossed and so that uh, you know, corrective actions could be taken further. Uh, recipe lifecycle management is, uh, uh, this is more of a DevOps feature in Workato. Uh, which enables uh, exporting of uh, recipes from one account and we can then import that entire package into uh, another worker to account. So we have used it, uh, uh, you know, like in a typical scenario where once the development is uh, complete, let's say in a, one particular worker to account, uh, we export it and make it available in another worker to account so that uh, a different set of people can kind of carry out uh, the UAT end to end. So with that, uh, let me hand it over to Vasan to cover next set of interesting features. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Rashmi. It's definitely soothing to the ears when your partner acknowledge and uh, appreciate some of the features that you've been, uh, we as Vakaro keep talking day in, day out. Uh, but that said, to continue on some of the, you know, gotchas from a delivery perspective, right? I, I put another list of key features that could be handy uh, when, you know, trying to deal with different kinds of integration use cases, uh, starting with uh, environments. So, this is most on the deployment side, right? So with environments, you have built-in access to development, test, and production environments. I mean, earlier we had it as three different, we needed to maintain as three different workspaces. But now with this feature, you can quickly toggle between any of these environments, you know, and then obviously all the uh, related assets like recipes, connections, lookup tables, those will all be included. All you have to do is make sure that you know you have the uh, the effective re uh, recipe lifecycle management to be able to uh, shift these assets you know between dev product and, uh, and uh, the dev test and production. Uh, next is the Connect SDK framework, right? So the Connect SDK framework is a robust framework to build your own app application connector or any other app connector with few lines of Ruby code. Uh, you know, by building connectors, typically you are abstracting the entire API complexity and logic and accelerating the recipe design and development. Uh, much more uh, seamlessly, right? Uh, you know, and that's where the low code, no code recipe builder comes uh, becomes effective. Additionally, with the open API and GraphQL connectors that we have launched, we're also accelerating the entire connected development time with literally no code, no coding, right? So think of scaling and delivery uh, based integrations. The accelerated connected development can get you in there. And especially in the HR space, when there are a plethora of apps where you know every specific app has got a you know is a, from a specific subset of HR processes, this gives a good way to kind of quickly get to get to your uh, get to the finish line by having a, a quick connector uh, you know uh, rolled up in, in no time. Another handy feature I know, I've seen I've seen is the accelerators, right? Uh, you know these are pre-packaged solutions for common automation use cases. Uh, it's basically a reusable component that can be used to accelerate delivery and value. As a package, it consists of you know past reference data, custom connectors, pre-built recipes, solution components, and guides. And we already have an ex uh, exciting list of accelerators built for both for the direct and the embedded side of 
engagements. Some noteworthy mentions are the Workday HR Accelerator. Right? That this is an accelerator that you can use to jumpstart your Workday implementations. And why specifically that? Because as you know, Workday is not a not an easy beast to make to tame it, right? So the, the the complexity is there in terms of handling it. I mean, in terms of handling it. But that said, this accelerator can help you, you know, jumpstart some of the uh, in, in implementations in common use cases like recruiting, pre-hire to post-hire onboarding, which are already configured. Others, other kind of accelerators include the a CI/CD uh, uh, kind of thing for automated deployment for manifest and many more. And then, and then one more feature is the formulas, right? Formulas, I think you, most of you might have seen it. It basically allows user to easily work and you know, transform data, right? And a good example will be transforming a date timestamp from an app, which typically always spits out a, a UTC format into a simple DDMMYY format. Another use case could be if you want to, you know, if you're going to get an employment status, which is going to be an abbreviation, you probably want to uh, make it out whether it's an active or a, 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 a terminated kind of status, right? So in these kind of use cases, the formulas uh, feature comes in pretty handy as well. Uh, and then utilities, right? So utilities are common tools which, you know, can be used for maneuvering data formats like CSV, XML, JSON, etc. Uh, because the fact that payload can be in any different format, Right, but, but in addition, we also have custom connectors like JavaScript, Python, and Ruby, which can be used for handling complex use cases like specifically XLS parsing or PDF parsing. You know, there's a common scenario where you, know, you can see when you can come across where employees related documents or files could be in an XLS or a PDF system in your customer system or that. So using these kind of custom connectors, we can convert them to a JSON format, make use of the metadata, and, you know, and, and obviously quicken the entire data processing. Right, so that's where utilities come pretty handy in terms of some of these handling some of these use cases. And lastly, batch, batch or bulk processing. You know, it is always a recommendation from Wakaro to make use of this mode of data processing, whether it's in a trigger or action. Of course, it's dependent on the application APIs. But in that said, you know, wherever there's a uh, with employee record and employee data, there are always going to be huge amounts of data. And so making use of this is always going to help you in achieving optimization and in terms of performance and task count as well. Uh, I mean, I thought I'd just put this slide to, you know, to show, showcase something exciting that's going to come. And, and this would probably uh, help you in some of the uh, you know, live use cases that you could solve in, in your current implementations and delivery as well, right? The first is the SQL transformation, right? This is a, a new connector, a custom connector that we're offering, which is, you know, which has the capability to connect different data sources, like CSV stream coming from bulk, ex bulk extract or bulk trigger, or even a file storage called the workout of file storage. This is specifically very useful for huge live, uh, 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 records. And I can think of our employee records and employee related records going to be in that particular order, right? And, uh, and once the different data sources and the schemas are defined, all you have to do is just run a simple SQL query that can you know, work with these multiple data sources, transform it, and provide the data format in, in the particular format that you want, so which means any kind of initial ingest, sync, or an ETL, ELD kind of use case can be well designed and executed. A utility is so per, so high performing that it can actually perform transform GB of GBs of record in, in mere seconds or there. Next workout of feature is the workout of file storage feature which is a new persistent file storage entity that is completely housed within workout using this you can store any kind of files append to those existing files and obviously make use of uh, the scrub operations on that. Now, utilizing a file storage becomes integral part of recipe because it reduces the whole complexity of data pipeline uh, in terms of the number of uh, job runs, uh, number of recipes, and time taken to handle large volume of data. Uh, the key USP that we're trying to offer is to the ability to design simplified data like, uh, pipeline recipes that can handle complex operations. A good example in this case is if you let's say if you have a file containing one million rows of data from an on-prem server or a particular server or there, if you're going to load it into a Google BigQuery table using batch processing, it might take say about fifteen to sixteen minutes. However, we can make it of this work out of file storage. We have seen that it's able to achieve within a minute, which means you're talking about 20 times faster and higher throughput as well, right? So as a combination, these two tools can be powerful in handling huge amount of data, which, which, which means that you have a lots of, of opportunities and problems to solve. And finally, the workout of table storage, right? So this is a separate component that provides the DB as a service for business data or any other apps. Right, so uh, Rashmi talked about the, the the value of lookup tables. This is literally another lookup table or two or a lookup table two or two. More looking what you're looking expect from a fully functional database and support for uh, an additional column types and unlimited column types and everything. 
I mean, like all other Mercado features, it is performant, it is scalable, secure, and can handle big volumes of data. And obviously, it's very and also user friendly. It's also user friendly, as you can see, providing no code spreadsheet like experience. I mean, uh, as well, right? And of, of course, as all product uh, Mercado products and features, it's highly integrated thanks to the you know the connectors, triggers, and actions for recipe use that we are building. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> great. So what have we heard so far is some of the ways and means to build and scale automations, right? However, as in when you scale automation, there could be some challenges that you can also come across when you are looking to build a, a COE or, or, or a center of excellence practice or a automation or a automation practice within your organizations. What, what are those typically, right? It could be the fact that with increase in SaaS adoption, there's also an increase in automation in, in automation opportunities. But there's also an increase in delivery backlog because uh, some of the applications do not come completely integrated. It means even if you're going to look at another application, you probably need to, again, think of a strategy to make it integrated and include as part of your overall ecosystem. Right. Another reason is availability of specialized resources that work with legacy uh, integration platform. Right. That was always going to be a challenge because anything with legacy, especially with the uh, tier and the with the scarcity of resources and 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 the knowledge, is, it could be also another challenge coming in there. And then the decentralized DevOps and product teams are also getting to specialize in business apps and data. Right. Which means that there's you know we have we have to way to deal with shadow IT that comes in play because. You know, every time there's going to be a, some sort of a shadow IT with some expected cross-functional teams working on and developing something out of it. And finally, the delivery budgets and timelines demand from business are putting a lot of pressure on or on a better, uh, you know, delivery in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, go-to-market and time to value, right? So these are some of the core drivers we're seeing today that are influencing our methodology as well as the product as a whole. Right. So to help <clears throat> navigate these different kinds of different stages of automation at scale, we have designed a framework based on the learning from our customers, from our own experts who have already done this. Right. So we call this a gears framework. It's basically short for govern, enable, adopt, run, and scale. So the framework is a collection of guides, best practices, and other assets that help you build, maintain, and mature your automation practice. Right. Uh, I, I mean to. I mean, obviously, for the benefit of time, we, you know, we may not be able to talk in further about it, but at a high level to give an example, right? I mean, to, you know, if each domain, if you look at this particular screenshot, right, each domain of the framework can be broken down into actionable building blocks, which we call as levers, right? And I mean, each lever is an area where you can make tangible improvements in your organization, which will contribute to a more effective, efficient, and better managed automation practice. It's basically trying to make small, small amends to those typical, uh, you know, processes and system that you have, which is overall going to help in running the entire uh, chain there. That's typically the, the, the concept here, right? For example, if you look at the business technology strategy that's put up here, it drives the entire integration automation practice, that, which means that every domain in the framework needs to be revisited or, or added up there. Another example is recipe lifecycle management. If you look at it, it only kind of covers only some parts of you know the process, which means that you need to more you need to think in terms of how your organization can plan, implement, and operate automations by applying those relevant processes over there. So that's how the entire gears framework come into picture, where you can break it down further. I mean, of course, the benefit of time we may not be going further into it, but that said, there's a lot of you know public resources on our website when on on the on the center of excellence and and on the gears framework as well. So moving on, the success stories. Uh, uh, Rashmi. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vasun. That was wonderful. So uh, let me share one interesting uh, success story for integration. So this is one of the popular integration use cases, uh, uh, candidate data sync from ATS to HRI system. So this client is uh, into HR tech space. They have a custom built ATS platform, which is serving for uh, mass recruiting. And they had their uh, end clients using uh, various HRI systems, including UKG, ADP, and uh, Workday. So uh, for uh, uh, you know, like data transfer uh, of or candidate transfer, uh, the, the process was manual. So the challenges they were facing was it was error prone. There was delay in uh, data reflection. So uh, we built. Uh, work out of this solution for them. We developed a custom connector for their ATS platform. 
and build the custom recipes, custom built recipes for each of these uh, HRIS platform, including UKG, along with Salesforce, ADP Vantage, as well as Workday. And as a result, uh, that entire workflow is now automated. There is no need of manual intervention. Overall, the development time is now um, really reduced by 70% when it comes to uh, going to next uh, uh, iteration of integration. Uh, the efficient failure tracking is, is close to 100% that, that enabled overall enhanced customer experience. Moving on, uh, the another uh, interesting use case is for uh, Slack integration. So this is uh, for a client, uh, they have like their inbuilt uh, skill development program for employees. And they have, um, uh, you know, like uh, employers can create custom programs for employees and employees collaborate with each other for effective learning. That, that, that's the system. And they had manual process for uh, Slack integration. So whenever a custom program is created, like create Slack channels manually or add, add users to it uh, manually. So this was uh, affecting the collaboration. And we, we then designed uh, integration solution for them, uh, built in, uh, built the custom connector for, for their learning platform and use the built-in connection connector for Slack uh, workbot to create Slack channels as well as add, add the users uh, through that integrated uh, workflow. So overall, it enhanced usability of the platform and uh, fostered the uh, collaboration amongst employees for learning. So over to you, Tom. Uh, you. Sure. Uh, again, this is Broadcom. Broadcom yesterday is a market implementation. It saw a lot of HR automations in execution, uh, providing a great value. Uh, today, I'll just talk about one particular, uh, you know, process that was used there. Uh, so the problem was basically in with forthcoming acquisitions and growing demands of IT. You know, that the IT function were forced to uh, reconsider how they could make processes more efficient and accurate without adding account. And it was it was at one point ending up being that for every uh, every delta that they needed to increase in terms of business, they needed to increase the delta in IT as well, right? So that's when they decided that the to adopt the worker automation platform to not only replace manual tasks with automation, but also to help orchestrate newly designed processes. Uh, and with that, the impact that they saw, as you can see, is you know six thousand five hundred hours saved per month. Uh, email provisioning to new employees, which was like 50 times faster, and increase in workforce, which was like 43 percent, but didn't need they didn't need the IT team didn't need to grow to meet you know the, that increase need, needs to do to automation over there, right? So which so if we if we if we're gonna drill it down, what are the typical areas that they improved it, right? So starting from employee on onboarding, right? So when it comes to the apps that were used in there, it was definitely the work uh, the work day. Okta, Google, Box, and WebEx kind of applications, right? From an onboarding perspective, the moment the, you know, the um, HR provisioning happened in Workday, so automatically there was a workout or recipe that was, was, uh, was such a way that where the same user's uh, data was provisioned in Okta, followed by which the basic provision process with rest of the, say, four or five apps was initiated, following which they managed it to get notified in terms of, you know, the employee being, uh, you know, not onboarded as well. Similarly, with the onboarding as well, the the uh, the HR needed the manager needed to in, in, include the termination date in work work day and from there on there was a workout recipe which automatically took care of all the deprovisioning process uh, by in, by removing deactivating some of the apps from different kinds of uh, you know from from Opta and automatically uh, transferring any of the uh, any any data or ownership back to the manager. And lastly, even the urgent employee offboarding, where in the case of there was a, in this case, a no trigger from HR system. So they kind of built a service now kind of a form, which would uh, initiate the individual uh, with immediate termination. And from there on, they were able to suspend all the core IT services uh, through Workaro, right? So through this, again, like I can say, this is just one piece of the entire HR automation. There were probably a lot of few more on the front office piece of it, side of it, on the customer experience side of it. But this was the area where Broadcom did uh, you know, see a lot of uh, you know, value from, uh, from Workaro. Great. Uh, that's pretty much in terms of our webinar. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks. Great, and uh, thank you, Vasant, and thank you, Rashmi. This was very, very insightful, informative. I think we often talk about the business side of things and what's needed, uh, why integrations, how integrations, but 
uh, as they say, delivery is where the rubber meets the road and yeah, you make the digital transformations happen. So when it comes to HR integrations and so on. So thank you again for all the informative uh, session today. And with that, let's take questions. I know we are we had a lot of uh, information that we covered here. So we are a little tight on time, but we will we do have uh, time for a few questions. And I see some of them in the Q&A. Um, so we can, and some in the chat. So let's uh, let's take a couple of them. And my apologies if if we are not able to get some to some of the other questions. Uh, we will take them up in our follow up. We will address them in our follow up email. So there's one question here about how secure is access to API recipes. Um, yeah, let me. Basantar. Yeah, let me take that one. So API recipes uh, can be protected and unsecured by uh, using various ways. It, it offers uh, authentication via auth token, or it also supports uh, JWT-based token authentication, and, and it also supports the uh, OAuth 2-based uh, authentication. So it, it can uh, you know, be very well uh, secured using these uh, techniques. Ah, OK, that, that makes sense. Uh, I think there is a question about limitations on workout files, and it may have to do with uh, Vasant, your uh, some of the coming soon features. I'm not sure, but yeah, if yeah. you can make uh, Yeah, I mean, I did answer that. So, from terms of workout of files, right, file storage, uh, so each file has got a maximum file size limitation of 10 GB. Okay, I mean, I'm talking about each uh, per unit file. And in terms of the re storage repository per workspace, it has a limitation of 100 GB per workspace. So that's the current limitations that's been capped on the workout of file storage, which is expected to be in GA uh, in, in, in a quick time than, than you think. Yeah. This is great. And then there's one other question I'm seeing, which is about, uh, you know, how do you do the, uh, is there, does Workado help you in any way with configuration data um, in storing it or mapping it? Or uh, could you talk to that, to either, uh, either Basant or Rashmi? Sure, I'll take that up, Janvi. Yeah, so when it comes to building integrations, like we we had to handle storing some of the other configuration data that that's inevitable with uh, you know multiple systems involved with a uh, lot of data. So there are a few ways to do that. Uh, so simplest one for simple uh, uh, you know like singular textual properties, like we can use uh, Workato environment properties uh, feature. Um, but if if there are you know like uh, of like more advanced requirements where we need to kind of have certain um, flexibility in terms of what are the allowed values and uh, you know like okay. recipe specific configurations then there is uh, uh, recipe level uh, we can configure certain parameters right at uh, that layer and if, if the scope increases to um, you know using some of the configurations across recipes then Lookup tables can very well be used for uh, storing, uh, be it uh, mapping data or or the master data or or uh, having uh, you know parameter parameterization um, in the workflows. Got it. I think there's another question, I, and we are almost at the top of the hour, but maybe we can uh, squeeze in one more question here. So there, uh, since you were talking about workflow automations in, and workflows, there's another related question, I think about approvals uh, for, you know, for long um, sort of workflows, like I guess the question reads, is there, is there a way to provision manual approvals for critical scenarios and workflows? Uh, I mean, is there support for that? I guess that's what they're saying. Yeah. Yes, yes, there is support for that. We, we talked about automating a lot of things, uh, uh, you know, with Workato. But yes, there is there is this feature of people task. So with this, like we can, uh, you know, introduce uh, approver uh, scenarios where, you know, like for some of the business critical scenarios uh, related to payroll or, or, you know, some other critical cases, it, it could still need a human intervention and approval before uh, things process in the uh, integration workflow. So yes, people task feature can uh, help with the uh, approver workflow. Got it. No, that is helpful. I was uh, so I guess that's something that you kind of bake into your integrations and recipes as you're building them. I would assume. Yes. Yes. Got it. Got it. Uh, so I think we are 
at the top of the hour. We do still have a couple questions that we didn't get to, but what we can do is take that up in our follow-up email uh, and uh, share that with uh, everyone who attended in the registration. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time. Really appreciate you joining us <clears throat> today for the session. And uh, you know, definitely thanks to Rashmi and Vasant for joining joining me today and presenting this session on delivery and tips and tricks. So uh, very informative again. And uh, yes, we will share this recording with everyone at uh, within the next couple of days. So thanks again, and good have a good rest of your day or night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you have a good one.